<laughs> welcome to Jerry's Fish Room. Hey guys, welcome back to Jerry's Fish Room. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you to all you subscribers who have gotten uh, me up over that 100 mark. Um, and uh, man, we're looking to keep continuing to push this. And so I'm, I'm just so stoked about what you guys um, you know, have done by subscribing and supporting this channel. And so just want to thank you for that. Uh, keep remembering and if you like the content if you want something else if there's something that you are interested in Give me a shout out in the comment section. I'd love to be able to um, See what I can do to accommodate that but in the meantime, let's talk about the 180 so As I said in the last video I'd already resealed it got everything squared away my buddies uh, from community aquatics uh, helped me move this into uh, its final resting place, which is my bedroom. Uh, and um, this week, we are gonna go through, as you can see, there's some styrofoam in the bottom. We're gonna talk a little bit about that. Uh, basically, in working to build this tank, I've been communicating with my local fish store, talking to him, getting some ideas, naturally checking out the YouTube stuff. And uh, one of the things I found was to help with creating that three-dimensional effect uh, is to um, and, and not cost a fortune in substrate to get you the the hills or the that that depth in the tank by getting it deeper in the back is to go ahead and put something like these styrofoam uh, blocks down now the styrofoam is safe for the aquarium uh, and uh, we're going to talk about here or I'm going to show you here in a minute how I did that uh, the second thing that we're going to get into is um, I'm going to try to start setting up the uh, Fluval FX6 for this tank. Uh, this weekend I've got plants coming in and so hopefully um, this weekend the goal is to get a substrate in, get the plants in, get the water in, and get everything ready to rock and roll and then start process the process for bringing my discus over to this tank because uh, that's ultimately they're going to be their home so uh, so with that being said let's go put some blocks in all right so uh, my good friends uh, from my local fish store came over uh, yesterday and moved the 180 from my garage into my bedroom which is where uh, it's going to be its final resting place and uh, I am starting just messing around a little bit uh, with the aquascape and and trying to build some uh, uh, some mounds or uh, some elevated uh, substrate uh, in there and so instead of spending a lot of money on substrate one of the um, ideas I've gotten from looking at websites and stuff was to just get some plain old styrofoam blocks from either Amazon or your local craft store and um, I am assembling them uh, with toothpicks kind of holding them together and then uh, got to order for some more uh, silicone aquarium safe silicone in which I will silicone them to the bottom of the tank and then I can start building my substrate over top of that uh, to give the appearance of uh, a little bit of a 3d look to it with a little depth to the back of the tank kind of all flowing towards the center and uh, that's kind of where we're at with this right now. Um, as you can see, um, over here, working with the uh, styrofoam, I've got these, these guys put together. And uh, basically just taking, uh, taking your uh, normal toothpick there. And uh, I will place it somewhere about like that. Get it about halfway up. Put another one over here. And make sure it don't run out. Put a uh, toothpick in here. And put a toothpick in here. I'm going to be using these uh, two blocks here. Right there, I'm going to use those two blocks to kind of join these together. And again, once the uh, silicone gets put on the bottom of these, 
that should take care of uh, most of the problem as far as holding them down. So naturally, even with some weight on the substrate, they won't float up. And put one other one here. And here, that's kind of what I've already done to the styrofoam that's in the tank that you saw earlier. And then at that point, I just am going to grab this other piece of block and press it down right on top as such. Take this one, press it down. It doesn't have to be perfectly lined. It's kind of do what you think is best. Um, you know, again, to the way this is built, if you kind of give it that slope coming down to the front um, and, then, and then just pinning this up against the back so I don't have as much substrate to fill back up there. And then we just take this bad boy up and go. Just kind of position it where you think it looks good. And voila. And it's all in the tank as such. And then the, the goal is, is I will be taking some substrate and I will start to pour over that. Uh, again, trying to keep three to four, three inches of substrate um, all the way throughout. But naturally, this will look a lot higher because those blocks are about two inches tall. So that will give me some good depth to the tank. And uh, we will jump in that one and uh, get to that later this weekend. Uh, hopefully, I've got about... Uh, couple hundred dollars worth of plants coming in uh, to get planted so I definitely want to get this thing uh, up and running all right so the next step which I've already started is to um, I want to fasten these down uh, so, uh, to the uh, to the bottom so that way uh, they don't float up even if I have weight with substrate on them the concern would be you know that as the fish move it around you know or whatever that that they might float up so in order to do that i uh got me here some uh can spin it around i got me some aquarium caulk here um so it's this is clear didn't really matter because it's going to go on the bottom and uh it uh, doesn't really matter what it looks like but this is also works as a good adhesive and so we're going to put some of this on to the bottom of these and just kind of push them down and let it set for a couple days. Uh, and we'll go from there. All right, so all I'm going to do is just, uh, I'm going to try and do this one-handedly here. So um, just put a little bead of caulk um, right across the bottom. As you can see, I kind of want to make it a little on the thick side. Uh, stay away from the edges so that way when I do push it down, um, it doesn't kind of seep out from the bottom and then we're going to take this and we're going to just put it in like so and again I'm just using this to there we go uh, just want to kind of again I'm trying to give it a uh, you know from a high part over here it'll come kind of drape down a little bit a little build up but also you know I uh, want to make sure that I keep these things off the edges when we put these in, uh, like like so. That way I can fill in around with the uh, substrate, so that way the white styrofoam uh, isn't really exposed. So this is uh, just looking at it from the front, just to kind of, again, to show you. Uh, I don't know if you can visualize what's going to happen there, but uh, these are all now fastened down, and we'll wait and put some substrate in, hopefully not tomorrow, but the next day. All right, guys, now we're going to talk about the filtration side of things. So on this 180, uh, I'm going to do a couple things with this tank. Um, I'm a huge uh, proponent of having a backup plan. 
so one of the things that I'm going to do, uh, ultimately I'll hopefully get a secondary um, canister filter or something to that effect to put on there as a backup. But in the meantime, I always like over filtration. So on this tank, I'm putting an FX6, which is plenty big enough filter to filter this tank. Uh, again, not much of a backup plan if something happens to that FX6. But what I'm going to also add to there is I'm going to put some sponge filters in. Now, I know a lot of you guys are going to go, oh, display tank, sponge filters, no bueno. For me, I love sponge filters. And I don't have a problem seeing them. However, when I set this tank up, the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to put my sponge filters over in the corner. And I'm going to put some nice big Amazon swords and stuff like that. I mean, eventually it'll, they'll come in small. I got uh, actually four of them to start from Aquarium Co-op, uh, along with a bunch of other plants that are coming in from my local fish store. But the idea is I will hide those filters, uh, so you, but you will get the sponge effect a little bit. Plus, it also gives me the opportunity that if the power goes out, uh, man, I could just slap those things on a backup battery air pump and keep... Uh, the water agitated so that my fish don't uh, have a problem. So let's talk about the FX6. Now, the FX6 right now, currently I have, is running. It's running out on that South American tank. If you go back to my previous videos, you'll see it. It's the 120. Um, I do have a Sun Sun um, 404 or 504 on that tank right now, and uh, I added the FX6 to it to uh, start seeding the filter. Uh, I put that on probably about two and a half months ago, uh, maybe three months ago. So the, the filter itself, all the media, media in it, will be seeded really, really well with, uh, with the bacteria. So that's how I plan on kind of helping the cycle along on this tank. Uh, but in the meantime, since that one's running out there, I need to get this bad boy set up with the hoses. Uh, so now when I got the FX4 and the FX6 that I talked about several videos ago, I uh, bought them used uh, from somebody, the same guy that I bought this tank from. And uh, actually, I apologize. I got the FX5 from the guy that went to this tank, but unfortunately that filter isn't working. Uh, but I got the FX6 and FX4 from my local fish store. Uh, he did a job for somebody and was able to get his hands on those two filters pretty inexpensively. So pass that savings along to me, which I'm so stoked about. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to set up the FX4 so I can get all my hose lengths and everything correct on this tank. Get everything set up and then dismantle the FX4. Bring the FX6 in once I fill this bad boy up, plug it in, and rock and roll. So that's what we're getting ready to do. So, before we get started, um, again, FX4, right here, awesome filter, uh, again, man, I was leery because, you know, these things brand new, they're not cheap, uh, but I got a pretty good deal on this, um, and they were like brand new, so, uh, and I've heard really good things. So that's going to be what we're going to set up using. The other things that I've gotten is because when I did buy the FX5 for this, and I wanted to get the FX6 hooked up it started seeding um, I used the FX5 hoses because they were already pre-cut to this on the 120 that I have out there so with that being said the other hoses that I had are too short so I ended up going online and I bought one of these this is a 13 foot hose I went to Fluval straight to Fluval bought it from them uh, the cool thing about the FX4 and the FX6 Man, you can get just about any replacement part that you need for these tanks and I just or for these filters and I absolutely love that. FX5, FX6, the parts are fairly much interchangeable except for the motor, which that's been the big problem for me. The motor took a dump on the FX5. That's why I'm gonna have to do a little different program and use the FX6 over here. All right, also I bought a couple of clips, brand new clips. Um, as you can see, I hope you can say that. Again, Fluval Original. These are clipped right up here on the, on the, um, on the rim on the back uh, so that you can wrap your hose in. And it's got these, uh, have these nice little clamps right here, which is absolutely amazing to keep that hose in a, in a great shape, you know, and, and keep it tight. So, um, so they got those. 
And then I also bought, uh, because the hoses that I got with one of the filters did not have the valves. So I also went online and bought me a couple of FX6 uh, slash FX4. They're pretty much interchangeable. This is the valve kit that goes on top of the filter. So what we're going to do is we're going to sit down and uh, I'm going to go ahead and assemble all of this and then just uh, do a quick measurement on this, hook this bad boy up, and we'll be ready to go. All right, so, so I've got this, uh, this set up about where I want it, and I'm just going to come through the panel here, and I'm going to come back to the farthest point, and just kind of keep my finger there at this point, because this is where it's at. So then the next thing I want to do just to make sure that I'm not cutting it too short, I'll get that later, is we'll turn around and I want to take this and since this is going to be the discharge, I'm going to keep that closer to the top and I just want to make sure I have plenty of room and when I bring it in here I probably have an extra three or four or five inches so that's going to be a, a rather good place to cut it. So I'm going to get my handy dandy pocket knife and we're going to just make a little cut right there make sure you get it right because once you go that's it <laughs> and then we have it set up two pieces and then the black end as you can tell this is the end that your you'll put on your intake and your discharge all right um, now that we have the clips on um we got to do is put the valve on the hose and so we'll just it's it's pretty simple we got a little hose clamp hose clamp goes right over the edge like so turn around and put your slide your valve in keep it tight as you can get that hose clamp there grab your trusty flathead screwdriver and tighten it down. All right, once you get that tightened down, you can't get it out, water ain't gonna come out, and you just repeat the process. All right, so I wanna set the hose, the discharge about, or excuse me, the suction about a couple inches above the substrate on the back side, and then we're gonna turn around and Put this clip on I don't hold that in place like so just snaps on come over here get another clip up top there holding that in place and then one last one on the back side again make sure you leave yourself plenty of room So plenty of room and you're gonna have to pinch the hose pretty tight here there we go there we go that's it now these uh these typically the fx series on the discharge or excuse me the intake they typically have a suction cup that you can put on the back of that. However, of course, I bought mine used, and so suction cups are gone. Uh, but as you can see, it's it's in there pretty pretty solid. So, um, and the discus don't move a lot of stuff around. If something happens and it becomes a, a, a difficult problem, I'll go out and find some suction cups, and maybe Fluval has them, and uh, we'll buy those. But that's pretty much it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do the uh, same for the discharge. And uh, we will be set up to go. All right. So we dropped that hose over. You can tell the uh, discharge is a little long. If you look, it's a little curled up. So I may uh, turn around and try to do something a little different with that. I'll have to cut it at the uh, discharge end and shorten that up a little bit so sometimes you just got to make those minor adjustments but 
here's the deal it's hooked up it's ready to go so all i have to do is take this fx4 out of here fill it up swap it with the fx6 when i'm ready to go and uh, again that's one of the things i love about the fluval fx4 and fx6 is they're so interchangeable you can man you don't like what the four is doing you can go buy a six plug it in where your four was and you're good to go uh, so that's pretty much the setup and uh, we are ready for this weekend to start the substrate and the plants all right guys well that's it that's uh pretty much the skeleton of this thing is set up now uh styrofoam's in ready for the substrate uh, hoses are pre-cut uh, and hooked up to the FX4 for right now and uh, we'll do that swap whenever I get ready to uh, put water in this bad boy um, and put a bio load on it as well because I don't want to lose the bacteria that's in that FX6 uh, but we're ready for substrate and we're ready for plants and we're ready to go on the most exciting part of this journey which is to make this tank into a bit of an aquascape now guys this is my first go at aquascaping uh, i have a wonderful idea for it and uh, we'll see if it comes to fruition as i go through um, i will videotape the whole process just speed it up in parts so that you guys aren't bored but i'm gonna videotape the whole process of putting the substrate in what i do getting the substrate set up putting the plants in, where I'm planting them, why I'm planting them, where I'm planting them. And hopefully this thing will turn out amazing. But who knows? Even if it doesn't, got to love the fish though. So guys, thank you for joining me. Remember, please hit the like button, subscribe. Um, and uh, man, ring that bell so that you can get a reminder when I drop the videos. And uh, guys, until the next time, remember what is coming next. Keep loving the fish.